The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the June 21st, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four ship, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I are going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. We'd love to hear from you at 877-927-6648. Now, if you have a question but you can't call in, you can always send me an email. Send that off to Steve at TFN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Now, if you're inside our Tigers Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we've got a bit of a mixed bag. That mix really only coming from the New York Stock Exchange, which is up two points, so basically flat. flat. Otherwise, the other U.S. indices trading to the downside. Dow's down 61. S&P's off 26. NASDAQ 100, 229. Russell's off 7. Semi's down 91. Trendy's off 34. New York Stock Exchange just went slightly negative now. Gold is off five bucks, with silver being now 41 cents. That's nearly a 2% move to the downside for silver. Light sweet crude is up about a buck, 72.15 is the print there. Natural gas up three cents, trading out at 260, and a 30 year treasury off 20 ticks, trading out at 127.14. Now, leading the charge dollar wise, the upside, you've got O'Reilly Automotive. Two and a half percent move, 23 bucks, 13 bucks for MicroStrategy. Elevance Health is up 11 bucks or two and a half percent. John Deere is up a little over 2% or nine bucks. And all the beauty up nearly two percent that's eight bucks for it to the downside nvidia down 16 buckaroonies nearly four percent broadcom off 16 bucks nearly two percent hubspot down 14 bucks three and a half percent asbill holdings 14 bucks that's a two percent move in service now down uh, two and a quarter percent that's off about 13 buckaroonies of course i want to look at what you want to look at let's begin by taking a look at the equity future charts out here so go to the daily time frame we do have two new profiles for you to write down in your pad of paper they now have been confirmed the case of the es mini that support level to be watching is 43.62 resistance 44.75 the center of that box at 44.18 inside the nq looks like it'll be the first down to test support Support being the bottom of its profile, and that's up at the 14,950 level. Now, if we expand out this NQ chart, uh, this has got the daily and the weekly. Let me just turn the weekly profiles off. That's not really assisting us at the moment. So let's turn those off, get rid of some of the clutter out there. So give me a moment just to do that. So now those green lines will go away. There we go. And so what we're looking at here are the bottoms of the profiles. Now, it's not a guarantee that if we close below 14,950.25, that is signaling a change in trend. But it's a pretty decent signal. And we'd have to, you know, we have seen here with regard to the daily profiles, we have seen where the uh, NQ has closed below profile level for a small period of time really back here in the early part of uh, february uh, to the uh, well late part of february to the uh, middle of uh, march out there price didn't really move too low and then we broke through the bottom of a profile again for a couple of sessions back in the uh, late stage of april but still watch 14 950 25 if price 
find support there, well, then the uptrend continues. If it busts through there, it may be signaling to you and I a change in trend. With regard to the ES Mini, still no bearish reversal candle, just like inside the NQ on a daily basis. Still no top on the daily time frame, no topping pattern that I look for. Uh, in case of the ES Mini, that support level will be 43.62. But the NQ, price will not get to 43.62, I would say, unless the NQ busts through that 14.950 level. Not that it can't, but at this stage here, the NQ is going to be the first one down there. With regard to the Dow Equity Future contract, it's just trading with inside its profile. It should have very good support at 34101. 34101 is the bottom of its daily profile, and 34081 is the center of its weekly profile. With regard to the Russell 2000, that one does have a sell the D point pattern. It has a TD9 count, price trading with inside its profile. The support level there is at 1852. So that's what's going on. We take a look at the daily time frame for the equity future contracts. Let's take a moment here and just see where we're at with regard to market breadth. Let's take a look at that 30 minute time frame. Here is for the ES Mini. And it's actually bullish. 199 instruments trading above profile. 158 trading below profile out there. So on a 30-minute basis, we'll take a look at that chart, see if we can figure out where price is likely to head to and if there's any other bottom pattern. But we do have positive market breadth well, for the ES Mini. Let's take a look at for the NQ out here. Let's get that set of statistics up on our screen. And for its daily time frame, we have... Drum roll, Johnny. 31 instruments trading above profile, 54 below. So that tells us about a choppy market out there. So the ES has got positive market breadth for that 30 minute time frame. The NQ does not. Let's take a look at the other four time frames just to get our bearings here with regard to what's being communicated to us from a market breadth standpoint. And with regard to the ES mini, uh, you've got uh, bearish crossover in the 60 and 240. I assume that we'll have the same thing for the NDX 100, which we do. So, again, it's the in the NDX is 30, 60, and 240. And in the ES Mini, is just the uh, it's just the 60 and the uh, 240. Now, let's switch over and take a look at those charts. So, if give me a moment here. Let's move over and take a look at those white background charts. We'll take a look at the ES Mini. We'll switch over and also then take a look at the NQ. With regard to the ES Mini, the 30-minute time frame was one that showed that positive market breadth. Now, as we expand out the chart, what we can see here as we can see a wave number seven bottom, that's letter G. We can see that a TD nine count pattern will complete as long as price by 1130 closes below, and it's pretty good odds that it will, 44.2175. So we'll in effect have a uh, TD nine count bottom. Now that low can form on the bar following bar number nine. So we don't know if it's the low that's in by 1130 or by noon. But what should unfold here is at least a bit of a counter trend move. And that counter trend move should take us up to its oscillator and change line once the pattern completes. That's up at the 4418 area. So that's the message from the 30 minute time frame chart. When it did top the 30 minute, that is, it formed a road momentum indicator top. We don't have the bullish reversal candle at the moment to confirm a road momentum indicator bottom. Only a wave seven and a TD nine count. So worth paying attention to. The 60 minute chart which had negative market breadth out here, does not show a, I take that back, it shows a wave number seven bottom. That says that at 12 noon, you could have a confirmation there. It needs a bullish reversal candle to confirm a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. Uh, but if it does have that wave seven bottom, price could be targeting its oscillator and change line about 44.20. The reason why I say it could is because it's trading below the bottom of that profile at 44.13, and that would be the first level that price would need to clear to then suggest that move to the 44.20-ish area. The 240-minute chart was also bearish out there from a market breast standpoint, and here what we have is a B, well, can't really say it's a B point. What we do have is no bottoming pattern out here. And price is trading below yesterday's low at 44.10. We're at 44.06. So this could be signaling to you and I a move to this 43.51 level. But 43.62, you've got daily profile support. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. 
Teddy Kegstaff breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive. He just hosted Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Let's uh, cut to the chase here. Let's take a look at the uh, charts and the time frames that are really pertinent for today's action. That's the five-hour time frame for the equity future contract. So if we take a look at the ES Mini, this formed a TD9 count bottom yesterday. That low right now is what's uh, being attacked. That low is at 44.1050. If we get a close, now this is a 2 p.m. close. It's five-hour time frame chart. If we get a close below 44. 10.50 at 2 p.m. That then is going to signal a pullback to 43.51. Remember the uh, bottom of that profile on the uh, daily time frame for the S is 43.62. So it'd be 43.51 to 43.62 would be the target. What happens if price holds that low? Well, then you still have a TD9 count in effect, and that would suggest that price would target its oscillator and change line up at 44.50. If we look at the NQ, it also formed a TD9 count bottom yesterday. It did that at 2 p.m. Now that low is under attack. <clears throat> that low is at uh, 15,126.50. If we close below that, well, there's still profile support out here, which price right now is at on the center of the box. The next area would be down at 14,841, the breakout level at 14,764. However, before any of that could happen, price is going to have to close below that 14,950 level. That's the bottom of that daily profile. The Dow Equity Future contract also formed a TD9 count bottom yesterday. Now, so far that low has been tested and rejected. That low is at 34,197. If that low holds, then the Dow is suggesting to you and I it wants to make a move up to its oscillator and change line. Let's just call that right now the 34,455 level. That's actually the bottom of its current profile. And not to be outdone here, but there's a possibility by 2 p.m. Let me see. Price would need to tick below 1870.70. The low so far. 
A oh, it has, 1869. So you're going to get, inside the Russell 2000, a TD nine-count bottom. So the question is here, can the NASDAQ, between now and 2 p.m., stage enough, enough of a rally to get back above the low of that TD nine count? I don't know the answer to that. But here we get some confusing signals from the markets. But I still believe it's a five-hour time frame chart that are providing us with the best signals, where price would likely head to out there. And so these would be the ones that I would be paying attention to. So we cut right to the chase right there. And we cut right to the chase, so we go take on some questions. So the first question, I actually came in yesterday. I didn't get to it. I believe it was from Nicholas. And Nicholas wanted to take a look at DocuSign. If it wasn't Nicholas, then I apologize. But whomever it was wanted to take a look at DocuSign. I didn't see that till I was off the air. Quite frankly, I didn't see it till last evening. But if we do take a look at DocuSign, the question was really about the TD9 count patterns. That's what we're showing here. Uh, well, we show a number of different signals here. But on the daily time frame, you'll see that today will become bar number eight. Now, what we know about a... Uh, what we know about the TD9 count is when we have a successful bar number eight, what I mean by that, that means that the low formed at least on bar number eight, 90% of the time, it'll go on and complete a TD9 count pattern. So odds favor, Nicholas or whomever asked about this, and you're looking for a TD9 count, that we should see a bottom between today and Friday. Why between today and Friday? Because the low, first you got to get bar number nine. It seems to be far enough away from bar number five that that's likely to come to fruition. But the low can also form on the bar following bar number nine. Now, you've got breakout support at 48.41. So if you're asking me where's your entry price, right now it's 48.41. But we need to see how at least tomorrow plays out and perhaps Friday as well. On the weekly time frame chart, DocuSign has just been in a sideways consolidation. Now, that consolidation is basically where it's be trading about right now at 49.70. Give it a little bit of room there. And then up at the resistance level, that's the TD9 count breakout here on a weekly basis. And the resistance TD9 count breakdown is at 67.35. Oscillator and change line on the weekly, just a tad bit lower. Support on the uh, weekly time frame is its profile, and that's at 44.82. So around 44.82 to 48.41 could be your entry area out there in uh, DocuSign. You'd like to see something going on on a 30-minute basis to support that. We don't have that right now. My apology for not getting uh, to this uh, yesterday. Just simply didn't see it on my uh, phone out there. Probably still a little bit of that jet lag. And, uh, but that's what I'd be looking for for DocuSign. So wait, uh, thank you for waiting for a day on that, whoever it was requested. The second request came in this morning, and this is from Alton. And his question is, where will gold bottom? So did I, I don't know if I've gotten rid of those charts or not. Let me see here. No, it's not there. Is it here? No, it's not there. Maybe I didn't put the chart up, and if I didn't, my apology. No, it doesn't look like I did. So, um... So how are we going to do this? I tell you what we're going to do. Uh, let me just uh, let me just go ahead and populate this set of charts right here. GC0823. Now let's let these populate. It may pull up my prior notes on it. Eh, it does not. So the question is, uh, where is gold going to a bottom? So my, my first answer to you is I don't have any kind of a bottom signal right now. You can see that we're only in bar number two, potentially, of a TD9 count. So if it were to be a TD9 count pattern, its breakout level support is down at 1867. As I mentioned uh, earlier when I did the uh, 11 o'clock update, uh, there's an A to B equals CD to the downside that appears to have formed. Here's the A to B leg. If I go ahead and I take this and I move this over to the C area out here, that gets us down below that 1867 low. That gets us below the breakout area. The actual one-to-one -one A to B equals CD on this uh, chart here would get us down to about, well, where did I put it? It would get down to 1848.10 would be the exact price. So that's a possibility. Now, with regard to did price break that with volume out here? So I'm just, just going to go take a look at GLD and see what the volume was yesterday compared to its swing point that we're looking at. So that swing point was from the trading day of May 30th. And so on May 30th, the uh, now I'm looking at a different panel. You're not seeing I'm keeping on the white background charts here. But on May 30th, the volume of GLD, that was May 26th for it. Uh, that's its weight. So its volume was 5.8 million shares. And yesterday it was passed with 7.5 million shares. So similar volume, but not more. Doesn't matter. As long as price remains below that uh, B point with regard to Goldilocks, that level to be watching is going to be, let me give that to you as well. That level that we're watching is 1949.60. So Alton, I don't know where it will bottom. 
uh, what we're looking for is a pattern. And with price below the bottom of his profile, and if it closes below the low, I would say if Thursday out there, pretty good signal that we have an A to B equals CD to the downside that's underway. I still think we have that pretty good signal right now because on a weekly basis, price has failed at its support level, the bottom of its profile. That support level has been tested for the last four weeks. Maybe the fifth time is the charm. So we get a close below that. We'll be in week number six out there, and that suggests lower price. Now, on the monthly time frame, the new profile that is formed is actually below price. But what we can see here is it is a bearish structured profile. So if this is just a counter trend move, Alton, then where we should find support is about 1876. So let's pull all this together. We've got 1876 as a potential downside target on the monthly time frame. The weekly, we really don't have a, a price target. But on the daily, we do. We've got an A to B equals CD to the downside. We know that takes us to 1848. Here we're at 1876 on the monthly chart. And what we also have is a breakout support at 1867. So that is going to be our range. I would say at this stage here, that's our range. And when we see a bottoming signal, well, then we'll know. But at this stage of the game right now, we just simply don't have that. What do we have on a uh, intraday basis? Well, that's a different story. Here on the 30-minute time frame, what you've got is a confirmed Rhodes momentum indicator bottom pattern. What price has done, though, it's dealing with resistance at 1943.30. If price, gold can close above 1943.30, there should be more of a counter trend rally, 1950 type area. But otherwise, this could be the extent of that counter trend move. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. 
This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. You got the Dow up uh, eight points, so it's flat out there. S&P's off 19, NASDAQ 100, 206. Russell's down six, semis are off 78. We'll certainly take a look at the semis, but right now let's get to uh, the question at hand. And this comes in from Coda inside the Tiger's Den. The question is, uh, do uh, with regard to TD9 count patterns, to mark signals out there, are there any on the NASDAQ 100, the Bitcoin, or natural gas. So we've got all three of those charts up on our screen for us so we can knock them all out uh, right away. Here, if we take a look at uh, Bitcoin, having a uh, two real nice days out here, um, with regard to a bottom, no TD9 count to the uh, downside, no TD9 count pattern, your bar number three right now. So no pattern out there for its uh, daily time frame. Um, I see what looks like a three drive to a bottom pattern, but I don't have the bullish reversal candle. But let's face it, what uh, Bitcoin should do is should go target its recent highs. These are the highs from April 14th. I'm looking at the June contract. That's between 34.75 and uh, 31.470. With regard to the uh, natural gas for its August contract, what we have here, Coda, is yesterday was a sell the D point pattern. So this is an extended about 1 to 1.618 A to B equals C D. Here's your A to B point. And then here is your C to D point out here. And it was extended. You can see much more than just that A to B level. That was that bear sash candle that uh, went ahead and confirmed that sell the D point. That was really also a Gartley sell pattern. So what we should see here is a further pullback. We should see that. Will we see that? I don't know. But ideally, when you get a top like this, what price should do is pull back to test its oscillator and change line. That's at about the 246 level. 248 is the center of its uh, is the bottom of its profile. So that's a target range out there that I would be looking at with regard to the NQ. Does it have any kind of a, a bottoming pattern? Well, it, yeah, it formed a. Uh, it doesn't really matter what has a bottoming pattern at this stage. It formed a top. And now we're looking for what I'm looking for is where is price going to likely pull back to? Look, if it's only a one day retracement out there, then this is uh, very, very strong. The weekly time frame chart does have a road momentum indicator bottom. The uh, daily does not. Uh, but again, we're just dealing with the top right now. Where might this pull back to? With regard to the NDX 100, Coda, no uh, TD9 count, no topping pattern whatsoever on the daily time frame uh, that, I, that I have. I, I can force... A, a wave number seven uh, top out there in the daily time frame out there. It's not the... It's, it's not the clearest of signals out here. But what we can see is that momentum has waned. We can say that because price is below a green oscillator and change line. So that could suggest a further pullback. Now, we took a look at the NDX 100. And I'm sorry, we took a look at the NQ. And the NQ has that daily profile level. And that's what you really should be watching. And that's at that 14,950 area. But to answer your question, are there any key in a, any TD9 count to mark signals for Bitcoin, natural gas, or the NDX 100? The answer to that is uh, no. So I hope that helped you out with regard to uh, your question. Now, I don't have any other questions at hand right now. So what do we want to take a look at? Let's take a look at uh, let's take a look at that NDX 100 and let's do it via it's a strong instruments out here. So let's do that uh, one at a time because I don't have anything up on the screen. And Apple would be the first one. Apple nearing a $3 trillion valuation out here, but it does have a confirmed roads momentum indicator top. It did that on Thursday. And now there's a new profile that is formed. So Apple is very likely going to go test the bottom of the profile. I suggest that because right now price is below that green oscillator and change line. The bottom of its profile is 181.27. I would say, well, let's expand this chart out. Let's just see what the Apple chart tells us. The Apple chart shows us the following. It shows that the bottoms of profiles have held with the exception of one period of uh, time out here. And that period of time uh, was in the uh, end of February to the uh, beginning of uh, March time frame out there. So I'd, I'd be watching Apple and I'd watch that 181.27 level. If price closes below that, we may in fact have a change in trend. Let's continue talking about the NDX 100 with John in Philly. Hey, John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? I'm doing excellent, and uh, I must tell you, I loved that uh, picture of Via uh, Leonardo uh, Fibonacci. Yeah, Fibonacci. Was that his yeah. first name? 
Uh, that's uh, Mike. Mike, uh, Le- uh, Leonardo is his first name. Yeah, yeah. We've got one of our dentists who lives over there in Florence. And uh, when he takes a walk every morning, he's got to walk right past Fibonacci Boulevard, so to speak. I don't remember what the uh, yeah, street that name was. Uh, that was fabulous. Just had to love that. How, uh, what a small yeah. world this is, eh? It is, and that's really the cool thing, you know. I mean, I saw a lot of history, and I'll talk more about it, you know, as I just try to unpack some of the things that I did out there. But one of the highlights was, you know, meeting meeting a tiger face to face, you know, uh, and in Florence, no less, and having lunch. So, you know, beautiful, beautiful time. And uh, yeah, I thought that uh, living near Fibonacci, you know, that, Larry, that's uh, we got to get that. Uh, I'll send Larry a picture of that. Need I need to need to do that, but I know you are are calling about the NDX 100. Uh, you believe that there is a, a top that has uh, is forming, I believe, and and I think part of that uh, was uh, using take a look at the monthly time frame charts for the NDX 100, which happened to have. And I'll I'll go ahead and pull those charts up, but but it's your floor. You're the one that called, so uh, tell me how I can best help you. Well, Steve, what I wanted to do was just ask you about that NDX daily charts that you were just oh. helping code up with that. Okay. And and uh, please that interrupt up me if I talk through uh, a bumper coming up. I'm. You're good. I, uh, Two and a half minutes. Two and a half minutes. You're good. Okay. Very good. Um, pardon me for hesitating as I was just looking to pull up a chart of mine, which I can't. So let me just focus on the question I have for you. Uh, sure. In that NDX daily charts, I wanted to draw upon your expertise of the, um, the Tommy DeMarc tools. Uh, you, uh, you use all the time the TD9 count patterns on all time frames. But, Steve, uh, you recall speaking with me years and years ago, I had used one of Tom's tools going back decades, and that was not only the TD9, but the TD combo and sequential counts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for defi- or for looking for intermediate-term trend changes, completing rallies, completing declines. What I wanted to point out to you, Steve, was on that NDX daily chart, the way I count it, is yeah. that as of it was either Thursday or Friday that I got a uh, 913 count, a in essence a uh, TD sequential sell signal that looks to be confirmed today. So uh, okay. Okay. that would argue for an intermediate term trend change. I wanted to ask you if you could just elaborate upon that and if you saw the same thing and I'll just listen while you uh, address that. Yeah, so John, it's a, it's a great question. So I do have that tool in my toolbox, but I've got to go dig it back out. So so I won't be able to respond right away. I, I, we are going to a break, but I, I, and I'll see if I can locate it. Um, it's in the other version of the software that I have out here but excellent point i know i know that you've studied that well and that you've identified it so so first thanks for passing it along to me but do me a favor just hold on through this break let me see if i can pull up that chart and pull up that tool as well this is steve rhodes with john and philly we'll both be right back in just a few moments think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. We got the uh, Dow up 28, S&P's up 12. We're on the line with John in uh, Philly. Take a look at the NDX 100. And John, I was able to pull up that tool, and uh, yeah, it confirms what uh, what you your work that you did, which was uh, today's Wednesday, Tuesday, Friday. So on Thursday was bar number 13. Was that TD9 sequential? And it looks like if we get a close today below, if the NDX 100 today closes below. 1500569, you'd get a confirmation of that sell signal. Is that, is that what you see as well? Yeah, and let me just lastly add, Steve, uh, then I'll hang up and thank you for your help. That sequential system is a combination of a TP9 count and then a follow on pattern. And I don't even know what to call it. I just know how to use it. Um, what I wanted to share uh, the observation about that particular tool is that that particular count occurs infrequently in yes. any markets. Yes. And my experience has been uh, using that tool since 1986, that when the uh, system, when that tool gives a trend signal, in this particular case, a sell signal, yeah. and, and subsequently confirmed <clears throat> that its accuracy in calling a trend change is something just over 80%. So there are certain times in which uh, the signal fails, but uh, it's the sort of thing that occurs infrequently, and given its uh, probabilities, it, it certainly warrants paying attention to it, at least for me. Yeah, no, no. Look, it's uh, you're 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 right on all that stuff, and 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 I need to find a way. Uh, to to, uh, to somehow get this tool applied, but as you said, it happens so infrequently that I just eliminated from my charts um, to, uh, <laughs> to you know to, just you know not to confuse me. But but you're right. When it does happen, you know you want to be aware of it. So I, I just need to go back and see if I can figure out a way, you know, to at least notify us on a, on a chart like that. So I appreciate I pre appreciate you sharing that with us. And when we do get off the phone, just to help answer Coda's question, I'm going to go ahead and pull up. The uh, Bitcoin form, just to take a look at that. I doubt that there's a account there. 
and, and natural gas and put that on there uh, just to see if there if, if there is any kind of combo or sequential count out there. So thank you for, for sharing that uh, with everyone out there. And that says that, folks, what we want to do, again, is really pay close attention now to the NQ and that support level of 14,950. Inside the NDX 100 itself, I don't have any profiles or anything that I can use here for support. So we revert back to the NQ out there, and that will help us out. So, John, thanks. Uh, thanks for, is there anything else I can do for you? I think we might have I think we might have lost them. So uh, so I'll take the answer to that is no. But with regard to Bitcoin, let's put up the uh, June contract. I believe that is expiring here, but it's got the most amount of data. So I'll put that Bitcoin up here. Now, I don't have anything that shows up for that there, uh, Coda. And I'm sure for natural gas, well, uh, let's not be sure. Let's just take a look at it. Let's get that August contract up there. And uh, yeah, no, 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 no signal there. No Tom DeMarc signal there. So well, thank John for sharing that with us. Now, that's important. Now, the question is, well, how about the S&P 500? Because I don't have a top there. And uh, let's see if the S&P has a, a similar um, similar signal as the NDX 100 does. So let's get that populating here. And uh, now the answer is it does not. It does not. Uh, so just the NDX 100, which we know can take markets a little bit. Let's take a look at the semis. Again, this is just on the uh, daily basis. The S now, the SMHs did confirm a road momentum indicator top. Now, I've got that signal turned off at the uh, moment here as I was trying to update uh, that uh, chart. Um, but I'll figure out a way to to add that uh, sequential and combo uh, 13 signal to the charts somehow, some way out there. Okay, so uh, what do we want to take a look at uh, next out here? I'm just going to see if I've got any questions that have come in. The answer is the answer is no. So no other questions there. Uh, what do we want to take a look at? Well, we got about four minutes here. You know what? There were a number of questions that actually came in about my trip yesterday. And so let's just use four minutes to uh, kind of discuss to discuss that. So as, as, as most people know, I went on a three week uh, venture. And the first part of that was in was in Egypt. And um, it's kind of interesting here. I mean, I'm talking about the trip necessarily. Uh, let me get on the right screen, too. That'll that'll probably be helpful. Um and so the morning that I left, I was trying to get some Egyptian pounds, and there's a, a currency conversion place in the, in the Boca Town Center Mall up there. And it, uh, the mall opens at 11 o'clock in the morning. And so on that Saturday morning when we were leaving, and they were struggling to get the Egyptian uh, pounds, I just wanted a local currency while I was, uh, while I was certainly spending, up, spending time there. And uh, with regard to going to Cairo, I was also concerned about security. Uh, and I, I can talk about that. So here it is. I pull up at exactly 11 o'clock in the morning, Saturday morning, because we've got to, got to depart my house at about one or so. And uh, uh, to, and it's easier for me to walk in through a retail store, through the Neiman Marcus doors to, to get over to where the currency is versus park in front of the mall. 11 o'clock, I open up my door to walk out. Some guy is running out of the store. Then another guy is yelling stop, and another guy, so there was an actual rob. The store just opened at 11 o'clock, and uh, so maybe it's like 11.01, 11.02. And these guys are chasing a guy, you know, yelling to stop, drop it. Guy runs into a car. These guys, you got to appreciate these employees who treated the store as if it was their own because I thought they should just let the guy go. Who knows with regard to guns? I mean, I actually got back inside my car. Uh, but that was kind of a weird way to start the uh, trip, and then going to Cairo and having had uh, security on my mind. But anyways, we were totally secure there. In that three-week trip, uh, my wife and I, we did it with just all carry-on luggage. So 22 days, all carry-on luggage. And we actually uh, didn't wear some of the things that we had brought with us out there, mostly because the temperature, we weren't sure. We went planning on being summer throughout all of Italy, all of Greece, and certainly Cairo. Uh, and then we saw some temperatures that were in the 50s and 60s, so we had to pack some other stuff out there. But uh, so we did that three weeks. Now, the cool thing is, if, you've, any, if, ever, if you've ever watched The uh, Kingdom of Heaven, now, The Kingdom of Heaven, a great movie out there. I recommend it. It's one of my favorite movies out there. Uh, it's a fictional depiction of basically the... Uh, the, the Third Crusade, uh, going through Alexandria and off to Jerusalem. But uh, the cool thing about that, and I'll put this up on my uh, chart, the very first thing that I see when we arrive into uh, Cairo, this is about 2.30 2 in the morning, we're driving to our hotel, is passing the Citadel of Saladin. Uh, 
so it goes back to 1176, 13th to 19th century out there. This is the residence right here that you're taking a look at where all those rulers for 700 years stayed. Now, it is an impressive complex out there. But, you know, you're going from just leaving the U.S. and all of a sudden you're back in history, uh, so to speak. And then the very first thing that I see you know, is is this citadel. And I mean, it is huge. It is gigantic out there. So that was a cool place. And then we get about four or five hours of sleep, and then we're off that very next day. And here's where we're staying, the Four Seasons Hotel in Cairo, um, and uh, which actually was in, is, is in Giza, uh, even though it says Cairo. Uh, we're on the Giza side over there. And the very first place that we went to was the mosque of uh, Ibn Tulin. That's the oldest mosque in the world. This is it right here. This is the oldest mosque. Here's another uh, picture of it. You know, it said a prayer in there for sure. Uh, I'm not Muslim, but you can say prayers wherever it is that you want. And the whole idea for me was to be able to really go back in time and try to be at places where, you know, I mean, we're talking 5,000 years ago. Here's the hanging church. This is the church that the uh, Virgin Mary is built on the same site. This is third century stuff out there. I'll show you a pretty cool thing about this church when we get back from this break. Steve Rhodes. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Well, welcome back, folks. So, so I'm just showing you the Nile, the uh, Cairo area. And what's really cool is that, so that first day when we really had no sleep or anything, we were able to go to that mosque, uh, the oldest mosque in the world. Then we went over to uh, uh, to the uh, church and then the synagogue, the oldest synagogue in, in, uh, in Egypt. And then we went to the area where supposedly Christ and 
uh, uh, footsteps are. So if we take a look at this, and it's not this church here, it's the church just down the street, um, whoops, where you where you walk into it, and there's a little corridor. You see this little hallway here that you uh, that you walk down, and that walk that when you walk down that area, that takes you to the actual cave. Um, where Jesus and Mary were for three months. So they sought refuge, refuge there. Now what they did was they took that cave and they took an area that they just simply have covered in glass and supposedly this is the actual stone. Now how do you know, right? But uh, it's pretty cool stuff to just be there and be a part of. And what, what you don't know or what I didn't know was how I would feel, you know, emotionally, if you will. It's not like I'm the most religious person or anything, but when you just kind of put things in perspective. And I say put things in perspective, I don't think there's a time in my lifetime when this this world is needed more faith. Um, yeah, I'm talking about trying to avoid World War III, but here's the well. So there's actual well out there that uh, supposedly, you know, they also uh, drank from. So you go from that, right? And then the next place that I went to was, the, so here's the Nile River. And so the Nile River has changed over 5,000 years. Yeah, global warming, whatever. It's, uh, you know, of course there's been climate change. Everything's been changing. In fact, that, that's applicable to with regard to the pyramids and how they likely were built out there. But here you can see, so the Nile supposedly came up to the back of the synagogue, and that is the area where Moses was supposedly plucked from the Nile. So the cool thing is that in a very small area out here, um, you can see all of that. All, these are the pyramids. I'll talk about the pyramids tomorrow or the uh, next day. But just in a very small space, uh, it, it's such amazing history is uh, contained there. So safe, safe as can be to uh, go there. I recommend, uh, you know, if you've got that on your bucket list, no better time than now. Quite frankly, it, it can't get much cheaper. I suppose it can, but not too much cheaper with regard to the dollar versus the Egyptian pound. Folks, I'll be back uh, tomorrow. Have a wonderful Wednesday. We'll see you on Terrific Thursday. Thank you.